Hey guys, it's 4th of July and we're getting ready to have some people over for a barbecue this weekend. And I was taking a look at my front porch. It's kind of drab. It's not really spectacular and special like a front porch should be. But I'm ready to do something a little bit more special. Nothing extreme, nothing crazy. Just something a little more welcoming from the road. As you saw on the videos where I put together these Shady Place containers, they're really pretty. I really like them a lot. Look at that one. Look at that spiller, it's magnificent. The caladium is growing slower than I prefer, but it is growing. It's so pretty, but you know what? You can't really see it from the road. You can't enjoy my front porch from the road because everything is kind of small and detailed. It's too little to see from such a distance. And since my porch is set back into such a deep tunnel, basically, you really can't enjoy those small details from so far away. I wouldn't call my Shady Place containers a fail. I love them, but they're not doing the job. In fact, if I were to go back in time, I would do things differently. I've mentioned that every container should have a spiller, a thriller, and a filler. However, I think it would have been smarter not to use the filler in this situation so that my thriller had more room to grow and get larger faster. You can't see the filler from the road. So even though it's pretty up close, it doesn't really do its job from so far away. My plan is to do less details and a bigger one. I had a plan to add a pot to my porch. And as you can see, the plan had to be changed. So now we are going with plan B. And I found a great deal on these two matching planters. I found a pretty simple basic wreath at Target and a clearance rug so that I can add that to the front porch. I'm moving a few of the planters aside, washing the porch. And then we're gonna plant a few plants in these fantastic containers. Look what I found. I found a blushing bride hydrangea. I've never had one before. It is a partial shade and that's what my front porch is. So I decided I would get brave and go ahead and put a hydrangea in each of these containers. Okay, we're gonna start by covering up that hole with a little coffee filter, a little trick I saw recently on YouTube. So we'll use that so that the dirt doesn't fall out. We'll add some nice potting soil and we'll get those hydrangeas potted and we'll add a flag for the 4th of July fun. Oh, I'm so excited. This blushing bride hydrangea likes part shade. It cannot handle too much sun. So this may be the perfect place in my yard to put one. It handles being in a container well, so my research says. We got our first blushing bride hydrangea planted. Let's put some plant tone in there, some fertilizer. Ooh, this smells terrible, Ugh. But it seems to be working really well. My plants love it. Now, according to the tag here, it does say that the blushing bride will bloom white. Then the flower may age to a soft pink or blue depending on how acidic or alkaline the soil is. So I'm looking forward to experimenting. If I had to choose, I would choose a blue flower versus a pink for the porch. Since I have the red brick, I think that would look nicer. Take the tag out there. I'm pretty excited. I'm nervous. I have to admit, you guys, I've not done hydrangeas very much at all. My firelight hydrangea, you can see over here, is doing great, but that's a super easy keeper. Anybody can grow a firelight hydrangea. So that's what I'm told anyway. But these guys, I think, are a little bit more challenging. So follow along and leave me any tips you may have in the comments so we can see how these turn out as they begin to grow and bloom. I am expecting that they will grow to be about three feet tall and three feet wide. If they're in the ground, they have the potential of getting to about six feet tall. 
but I don't suspect they'll get very large in these containers because their roots will be limited on space and how large that they're gonna be able to grow. Now they will freeze over the winter if we don't take them in the garage. Looks like they're hardy to negative 20 degrees, but in a container like this here in Oklahoma, it could get too cold. So we'll keep a close eye on it. I want so badly to add something in here to trellis over, but I'm gonna restrain myself. Simply just put the one plant in the container. You gardeners know what I'm talking about. Add a little bit of water and we'll start decorating our porch. It's 4th of July weekend. We had our barbecue. We had a great time. Our guests have gone home. We're relaxing for the evening. It's a lot quieter out front here in front of our house, less traffic driving by. So I wanted to take a minute to show you what we did on the front porch to make it more welcoming and inviting for our guests and kind of how it turned out. As we approach the front porch, you can see what I mean by how it's hard to see from the road what's happening up here. I've been taught that the front porch of a home is one of the most important factors of making the home feel inviting. Making your guests feel like they're welcome. Well, I wasn't doing a very good job of making our porch welcoming to our guests. So we went ahead and made a couple changes. Nothing big or extravagant. We got a rug. We got two rugs. Welcome to our home. I got a very, very basic wreath to put on the door. I can add a seasonal bow or something like that to it. Some super cheap and inexpensive American flags for the 4th of July holiday. But I want to show you what I planted here in my container. Endless Summer is calling it a Blushing Bride Big Leaf Hydrangea. Follow along by subscribing to my channel, Favorite Hobby Gardener, and you'll be able to see how well it works out putting this hydrangea in a container. So hopefully the hydrangeas will bloom, great big white flowers, and we'll be able to see them all the way to the mailbox. Happy 4th of July from your favorite hobby gardener.